See what this baby's got inside it. Hey, what's up, guys? Brett from Aptic Intel here. Bark, bark, ew. You suck you off, Phil. Oh, Josh, I hear, I hear screaming. Oh, no! It's gone. The controller's gone. Look at that. You look fucking fantastic. Welcome to Haptic HQ. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Hapticast episode number 98. My name is Josh Tall, and I am joined by my best friend in the entire world. Would want it any other way, Brett Roberts. Hi. That was very nice. No, that's all you're going to get from me ever. I hate okay. you again. Fuck you. That's fair. Listen, Brett, Hapticast episode number 98. Here's the thing. Right off the bat, we got merch. Go buy it. Hapticintel.com slash merch. Uh, you should... Um, Brett is wearing, wearing it. it. Uh, I think I'm wearing it under here. No, I'm not. I'm not wearing it under here. This is a black t-shirt under here with nothing on it. And yeah, Brett is on that t-shirt. Marvin C's is on there. If you haven't seen our uh, um, Unclaimed Baggage series, you should go check that out. Um, Christian says Marvel Snap is duty. I agree. We're actually going to talk about that. Uh, I'm done with that game forever. I'm fucking finished. It's bad. I don't like it. Um, played it a lot and now I don't want to play it anymore. Uh, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. We have our 100th episode coming up, Brett, which speaking of for the video viewers, you know, you can above our heads see a phone number that you should call um, and leave a message for us. And you might might end up on episode 100. Right? Yeah. You're acting like I'm saying something correct. wrong. Are you OK? I was literally looking up at the message, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. If you call in. Right now at 904 through cult and or 904-878-2858. Yes. If you call that number, you'll get to our voicemail mailbox and you'll be able to leave us a message. And as Josh said, we, we might play it on Hapticast episode 100. So if you have a question for us or a general inquiry or you have a topic starter or you just want to join the cult, uh, leave a message, a voicemail message, and we yeah. will get back to you as soon as possible. Yeah, uh, you could also call it live on our um... – can it? Okay, there we go. I thought I just unplugged my mic for a second. Um, you can also call in when we do the 100th episode, um, and maybe you'll hop on the show live. Uh, just as we said last week, if you do something bad, you will be uh, sent into oblivion forever. So That's right. We'll come to your house, and we'll eliminate you on the spot. That's right. Last but not least, make sure you follow us on all audio platforms, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. and so forth. Um, we have a lot of audio listeners, number one video game podcast in Saudi Arabia and Nepal and a bunch of other places. So It wasn't Saudi Arabia. It was the United Arab Emirates. That's close enough. So We're about to be the number one podcast in India as well, if we play our cards right, apparently. Dude, Josh went viral. I, oh, yeah. That's not even what I was thinking. I was just going to say I hope so because... Whew, that's a big country. It's a large nation. So, so you tweeted something out about this this Indian film the other day, and you got like over eight hundred likes on Twitter. On it's your like a thousand, over a thousand likes. Yeah. There's too many people. Like third, like thirty thousand views. You know, there's too many of them, dude. There's a lot. I'm not saying that we need to do anything about it, but there's too many of them over there. Okay. No, I do not agree. I do not associate me there's with a what. Lot there's a lot of people over there, and they are all just liking your tweet, and we need to put an end to that right now. No, we don't need to put an end to it. We need more of it. Um, yes, about RRR Christian says in the chat. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, also, yes, no nipple tassels or um, cock rings. That's correct. So, for the 100th episode. That means. For the 100th oh, yes. episode. Um, all right, Brett, quick topic rundown, then we'll get to our media consumption update, which I think, too, maybe just as a forewarning to everybody, might take... A little bit longer this week, depending on how much we talk about Last of Us or not. I don't know if we're really. Gonna... I don't know how much we're going to talk about it. <clears throat> it's, we're not really doing like a spoiler thing, but you know, it's one episode. Yeah, it's not like a whole series, right? So, so um, but just a forewarning for that. And then we have, um, we actually have video game releases for you this week. 
Then getting into the Bismal Chronicles, we're going to be talking about the Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, apparently being a game as a service, which, which would be real great. Um, uh, Motorsport Employees, a game that you probably haven't heard of in years. Um, we're going to be talking about that and them not getting paid since October. That's a Russian studio. That's a Russian studio, by the way. Slick Stories, Stadia is shutting down today. It's over today. It's all over today. It's closed down forever. But we have something interesting to go with that um, that I, I thought was was nice uh, to, you know, will help send Stadia off in style. Um, and then last but, not, <laughs> last but not least in that, um, uh, talking about Attack on Titan, Titan's final season uh, coming in March. And then our main topic, of course, as suggested by the title, is that there might be a Metal Gear Solid showcase coming up. Uh, very nice coming up uh so stay tuned for that uh, we're gonna be talking about that how we heard about it and what we might want to see in it and what we might get in it so brett without further ado um uh, let's hop into our media consumption update um i'll start this yeah. week you started last week uh and then maybe in the middle we'll do the last of us and then you can continue although we yeah. actually have a lot of crossover here so let me start with the stuff that i know you don't you didn't watch or play or do yeah yeah that's fine uh first of all i watched Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. I thought it was aggressively mid, uh, which made me sad. I am not happy that you thought it was mid. My thing is, uh, as I am really tired of meta pandemic stuff and its inclusion in anything. Um, I watched. I just didn't think it was much of that. It's the entire first hour. Everything in the entire first hour is about that. And any inclusion of it, I'm really, I'm really sick of it. I'm, I'm tired of it. I watch movies and play video games to get away from that, and I'm really done with it. Yeah. Um, I also forgot to include something that Christian just mentioned here, but the menu. I watched the menu. Did that I mention movie. that last week? I don't even remember. Um, menu's awesome. Um, other two movies. Here we go. Listen to me. Are you listening to listening. me? Mm -hmm. I watched RRR. Yeah, this is a movie out of India, Tollywood specifically. Yeah. It's not Bollywood; it's Tollywood, which is a different region with a different language in India. But just for explanation's sake, Tollywood is like Bollywood movies, but ten times more insane. Mm. Bigger action, bigger dance moves, even bigger stars. It's awesome. Okay, I don't know much about it. Also, just so everybody knows, I'm not like a fucking expert on this stuff. But I watched RRR. It is the best movie I've ever seen in my entire life. That is not wow. a meme. That is not a joke. That is a fact. It's quite long. It doesn't matter. It's three hours no, long. Just, I, wish it, yeah. I wish it was 14 times longer. Here's the crux of it. We do not get movies like this in the West. They're not made. They used to be made. Right back in the heyday of Hollywood, where you have these movies that kind of aren't any genre, but are all the genres at the same time. Mm. And this movie is the best action movie I've ever seen. It's the best musical I've ever seen. It's the best rom com I've ever seen. It's the best buddy cop movie I've ever seen. Um, you have to watch this movie. It's not a you know watch it if you have no. If you're listening to me out there, stop what you're doing right now, including if you're listening to this podcast. Turn it off and go watch this film. It's incredible. And everybody in Hollywood should be ashamed that they don't make movies like this. So why do you why do you think that is? Just we're afraid to take risks nowadays or It's absolutely bonkers. It's fucking insane. Everything about it is nuts and everything about it works so well. It's not a genre movie, right? So it's hard to market. It's right. not any one thing. It's a bunch of things mixed together. And it takes a lot of risks. It takes a lot of risks. Um, and this is made for way less money than most movies in Hollywood are. I think the budget was like $70 million. You think of a big budget movie in Hollywood, it's like minimum 150 to $300 million. Right. And I think Hollywood is just a bunch of pussies. To be honest with you, and then the yeah. there's then there's the other thing to take back to the conversation with Glass Onion. There is a 
backdrop of colonialism in this because it takes place in a fictional 1920s where British rule, the British ruled India, right? Mm -hmm. But there's no political messaging injected on either side, any side of any issue. There's no, it's not trying to be this freaking stuffy, like ridiculous preachy movie. It's right. there to have fun and entertain you. And I feel like nowadays, especially in the United States, anything produced is like that. Except for horror sometimes. But I also think yeah. about to like movies that I love from back in the day. Like the 80s was great. And there was a lot of stuff in the 80s that was just there for fun. There's a lot of stuff in the early Hollywood era where it's just there for fun. It's not trying to sit you down and lecture you on anything. It's just there. Right. And it takes risks. And it works. So... See, there's a lot That's of stuff awesome. in the chat here. Am I uh, missing yeah. anything? No, no, there was just a, a spammer. Oh, okay. um, so, so yeah, I mean, I'm interested in checking this one out. I've, it's been in my watch list. I've been wanting to check it out. Uh, it's on Netflix, so it is. I'll watch it. It's uh, it's incredible. I love it quite a bit, and I've also been listening to the soundtrack every day. So, uh, I have a Bollywood movie that I watched back in the day that I want to recommend to you. I probably recommended it already. Uh, but it's called Once Upon a Time in Mumbai. Yes. It's that in my list. Slaps. Yeah. That I'm I'm going to work through SS, the director of RR's backlog first. His name's SS Rajamuji, Rajamuli, something like that. Wait, I, so his, his name is SS and he made a movie. No, his, RR. no, his, his initial, he really just goes by SSR because his name is so long. And RRR, it does stand for like Rise, Re Revolt, and Rebellion, but it's actually the first letter of his name and both of his lead actors' names. And the lead actors in this movie are like massive in India, like fucking mm. rock stars over there. Like, hell yeah. Our, like, U US movie industry doesn't operate on the star system anymore. Like, you could have somebody like, um, I don't know, Robert Downey Jr. Nicholas in a movie or Nicolas Cage in a movie, and nobody goes to see it. Over there, these people are in a movie, they see it, and they freak out. So I'm going to work through that and some Holly, uh, Tollywood stuff, and then I'm going to shift to Bollywood and just, in general, watch some more stuff from over there because it's awesome. Speaking of, the other movie I watched, also by SSR, is I watched Bal Bahabuli, The Beginning. Bahab I don't... I'm sorry, I'm butchering these words. Um, which is like a ancient biblical epic about this warrior and dude it's fucking awesome i gave it five stars on letterbox one. as well same director oh yeah it's same director uh it's a duology and there's this there's the beginning and the conclusion they were massive movies over there and there's a lot more intric intricacies to some of the stuff i've been learning but we don't need to talk about it here but he's big over there his movies are big over there there's a lot of language and honestly political stuff of why he's so big over there bringing right. all these different areas together because india is fucking massive and they speak like 12 different languages and stuff yeah. i didn't know any of this stuff and i'm really interested by it but even more importantly the movies are just fucking fun and awesome and when i tell you and good yeah and when i tell you dudes rock in these movies and chicks rock in these movies dudes and chick rock in these movies everybody rocks everybody is fucking rocking out in these movies and it's awesome it's fucking awesome <laughs> i love it <laughs> So, all right, games, uh, power washing simulator. Um, don't ask me. It was Brett's idea, and it was a great idea, and that game is awesome. It was great. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, on Game Pass, we played a little Halo Infinite. That game sucks. Um, Overwatch 2, that game also sucks. I think I'm really done with Overwatch. I'm really sick of it. I really did you am. Hear about, did you hear about Blizzard in China? No. It am happened, I, like, after going to be happy news? about this? No, well, maybe I don't know. It, we it, it's like a new breaking news story that came out after we already put the rundown together. But basically, it is like China is like banning all Blizzard games. Mm. <laughs> so think about that for a second. All of the Blizzard games, including Overwatch Two, which is free to play, are now going to be like you're not going to be able to play them in China. Yeah, well, that's what they do over there. So that's insane. Uh -oh. so. Actually, I'm I I'm actually redacting my last statement. I'm going to play the shit out of Overwatch Two now and give them a lot of money. Well, it's funny because they put so much Blizzard, put so much like energy into like appeasing the Chinese government and whatnot, and now like the game's banned there. So yeah, I do think Overwatch is better on PC, Christian. You're right, and we both have it there. And honestly, I should play it there instead. 
Um, other two games I've been playing. Pentiment. I'm playing it on my Steam Deck, actually. Now, it is on Game Pass. I started it on Xbox. I don't want to play it on Xbox. I want to play it on the handheld, so I got it on Steam. Um, wow. It's it's pretty cheap. It's 20 bucks. Um, this game is fucking awesome. This game is if Danganronpa was set in a historical setting. That's awesome, dude. And this game is mind-blowing. Like, actually mind-blowing. It's so... It's like... I literally... The whole time I'm playing, I'm like... I feel like I'm playing Danganronpa for the first time. Again, where, like, they're so... It's so well written and fucking insane and crazy what happens that I can't but, even describe it. But let me ask you though, it, is it is it the thing about Dongan Ropa that I really loved where like the characters are each original and unique and and interesting and I feel like the setting also like pushed that up and made it even better. So when you tell me it's Dongan Ropa but it takes place in the past, um and also like the graphic style that I saw, I'm not hating, Ugh, I'm just I'm the wondering. graphics are beautiful. So is it hard to like like the characters or are no. there likable characters in this A game? You love or hate everybody. Mm. Um they do a really good job of that. It's like a storybook. Like it literally yeah. is like storybook graphics. But they it also inject elements of persona in there where you have relationships that you need to deal with people and like you won't you'll say something or you'll go down a dialogue section and it'll be like, "Oh, this will be remembered." You know, which is pretty standard in video games. But then you'll see that several times. You're like, what, what is this person remembering? Like, what's going on? And then something will happen that's directly related to the narrative. And it'll be like, oh, here, here you go. Here's a list of all the checks that you failed. Or here's a list of all the checks that you passed after all those dialogue choices. And it's like, fuck, I failed that. So I can't do, I can't go about this in this way. Um, and it's so... It's broken up into three acts, and the first act, I was overwhelmed at first, but once the first murder happens, like, you, you start to get what's going on, and it's so, it's so, I'm trying to explain it in a way that doesn't make it sound abysmal, it's so unbelievably vague that it works, and what I mean by that is just, there's no hand-holding, you really have to be careful about who you're talking to and what you're saying to them, and the whole point of it, right, is like this is after witch trials happened, right? So there's still people that are worried about people being witches. Like the church is the – like you're operating in fiefdoms where the church is the law, right? So you have to pay taxes to the church. And it's a, like where people are like, why am I paying so much money to the church? And you have these corrupt church officials. And it's so – I don't know if it's historically accurate or not. I have – I'm assuming that most of the stuff in it is. And it's so interesting because it's like, if I say something to somebody, they're going to think I'm fucked in the head. They're going to think I'm a witch. They're going to think I hate God. Like It makes you think like you were someone from back then, really. Right, which is so hard to do. And it's awesome. And solving the murders, I, I don't even know if it's possible. <laughs> like Really? They, like, And they present it that way, too. You, it's like, you have to present... It's the archdeacon in this game who is like the head of the church who comes in to do like you, that you ha like is the judge and you have to explain all of your findings. But the first murder, I was like, this is what I found, but I don't know who did it. I genuinely don't know who did it. And then there's a time skip and then you go back and you experience the implications of your choices. It's so good. I think you would absolutely love it. I really do. It's very, it's dense in some of the terminology that's used that I actually struggle with. But what's cool is if you don't know what a word means, there's a button that you can hit that actually gives you it, like it opens up the storybook and gives you the definition of the word. That's cool. It's very cool. Thinking back though, like Danganronpa, I feel like a lot of the cases also were very, like the murders were impossible to solve oh, yeah. based on what you had. And you, you don't really figure it out until you go to the trial and then you work together to kind of like piece all that. Right. You know, this it's very more one on one, though. Like you have to work all of it out before you get to the trial. And there is mm. there is things that allow you to do that characters and another place that you go to trying to be vague um, 
where you can work through some of it and make your accusations, like what, what you're going to come to the trial with. And then in the trial, you have to be like, here's this, 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 and this mm. is really good. It's, I'm honestly really surprised. It's, it's from, uh, uh Obsidian. So, yeah. I mean, not their typical kind of game though. No, no, very different, but really good. Yeah. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to keep, I'm just going to blow through because we, we are, we're going over here. TV and anime. Um, Chainsaw Man, watching that. It's good. Um, Paul T. Anderson, we're both watching. I watched it oh. all on uh, Paul T. Goldman. Sorry. I don't know why I said Anderson. Um, you recommended it to me last week. I watched all of it. We watched the new episode yesterday, or Sunday, rather. Uh, show is awesome. Don't know what else to say about it. It's fucking so weird, and he's abysmal, and I love it. And it's the next episode is the finale, I think. It is, yeah. Um, and then last but not least, The Last of Us. Episode one aired on Sunday. I I think we both really liked it. Um, I had no issues with it at all. I, I don't know what to say other than what a good adaptation. And, of course, as somebody coming in who's played the video game four times, maybe, personally, I know all the beats. And the show does such a good job of you get to where you go in the game, like beat for beat. But how you get there is how the show surprises you sometimes, which is interesting because somebody that's never played the game won't know. But us mm -hmm. as video game players can still be surprised. Like at the beginning, um, the plane crash. Yeah. You're driving down the road. You're trying to escape. I remember I was like, oh, here comes the car crash, which get, makes you have to get out of the car and escape and through the city. It. And they tease it and then they don't do it. And then two seconds later, a fucking plane crashes. And I'm like, oh, shit. So it does that several yeah. times. And it's, it's, it's much, really good. It's much like what uh, Final Fantasy VII did, where it rewarded fans that have already played that story mm. by shifting certain character and story beats mm -hmm. in ways that, as a second-time experience or a second-time viewer, you're like, oh, here it comes. And then they're like, nope. So you yeah. still, as, as someone that knows exactly what's coming, you can still get a lot of enjoyment out of it. Absolutely. Um, and... There's a lot of original stuff that yeah. didn't even happen in the game that fleshes out things even more than yeah. I thought they would. You and know? It, yeah, and it gives you... Yeah, Christian, it does. There's there's several sequences, actually, that are shot for shot from the game, like exact. Yeah. And there's several sequences that are not. And everything with the tendrils and the opening in this is fucking, like, really creepy. And how they presented it with, like, the old 60s TV show style thing to give you all the exposition that you're going to get is so cool and really unsettling. And I think all the actors do a great job. I think specifically, obviously Diego Luna and Bella Ramsey fucking kill it. I mean, Bella Ramsey, you and I have not had a problem with her casting at all ever. As soon as she was announced, I was like, yep, makes sense. Uh, anybody that thought she was going to be bad, you look like a fucking fool because she is awesome. She nailed the role immediately. Like the first line of dialogue she had, I was like, "Oh, that's Ellie." Yeah, that's her. I was I was done. And as soon as like as soon as Diego Luna walks into a room, I I didn't think it's gonna make me sound like an asshole. I didn't even think I didn't make any comparisons to him. What Pedro or Diego? Because Diego plays um, Diego Luna. Wait, no, Pedro, Pedro Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Sorry, but Diego Luna is in, is in it, I believe, as Tommy. Right. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. That's right, hold on. that's Cassie and Andor. Uh, Pedro Pascal. Oh yes, yeah, you're wrong. I'm, we're both wrong. Um, Pedro Pascal. I didn't once compare him or Bella Ramsey to Troy Baker or Ashley Johnson. No, I just saw them, and they were those characters. But I compared them to the characters. Oh yeah, but like they I were was, those characters, right? And I was like, as soon as he walked in, like you said, as soon as he walked in, I was like, oh, that's Joel. Yep. And like he he acted like Joel and. His the way he he delivered the lines was like Joel, just like Bella was very much Ellie. Yeah. So I w I was very very happy with everyone's performance, and actually one of the actresses played the character in the game and the show. Yeah, Marlene. Yeah. Yeah. So that's and same awesome. thing. I didn't I didn't know that she was the one from the game until afterwards. I saw and heard her. I was like, yeah, that's Marlene. Yeah. So Tess is great. Uh, I, we don't really we get a little bit of Tess, but mm -hmm. um, I feel like you don't really have a lot of time with her in the game. So right. It's, she feels right too. I'm interested, you know, she is the first one on the list, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll see how they handle that. And um, 
I don't know. I just, I just don't know. I don't know what else to say other than I think it's really wonderful. I really do. Second most watched premiere uh, in the last ten years for HBO. Only other than to Game of Thrones, House right? of the Dragon. Yeah. yeah. So big. Yeah. Good Hell yeah! Them. Absolutely. Watch it. All right. All right. I watched uh, Borat subsequent movie film for the second time. That fucking movie slaps, and I didn't even realize it, but it was directed by the director of Paul T. Goldman. Yeah. Um, so I, that was just like, I saw that at the end of the credits, and I was just like, holy shit. Um, also, I got a little nice little... When the credits rolled for Borat, I was like, holy fuck, I didn't even realize that song was in this uh, movie. Yeah. That film is phenomenal. What? I forgot to mention, I also platinumed the Stanley Parable Deluxe. You platinumed it? I did. I platinumed it. Sorry continue uh, it, you saying just the two of us reminded me because that was also in that game that song is popping up everywhere yeah anyway continue um so i love that movie it's great it's funny it's very much of its time they talk about the pandemic and donald trump and all that but it's very funny um and what's her name maria bakalova that's like her breakout united states role she's yeah she's great. awesome i also watched the netflix documentary the hatchet wielding hitchhiker oh oh Oh. Everybody can hear me, but you can't see me. Hello. Oh, Brett just left. What are we doing? You didn't need to leave. I just need to reset my camera. Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, you're good. Keep going. Hatchet Wheeling Hitchhiker. It's a famous viral meme that happened a couple years ago where this guy stopped a... Uh, there was a man driving a car, and he crashed into another man, started spouting racial slurs, and then he got out of the car after pinning the black guy and started um, grabbing this woman and wouldn't let her go. So Kai, this hitchhiker, gets out of the car. He was actually driving with the person that started it all, had a hatchet with him, and hit the guy three times um, with, the, with the hatchet, and he was dubbed a hero and went viral, and people made mixes of the, the news clip and all. And the basically the documentary is all of the people that try to exploit this person, this character Kai, um, finding out like as the as the film goes on, they start to discover maybe it wasn't such a good idea to take an unhinged, disturbed, hitchhiking young man and try to throw him into you know stardom, mm. and. Um, Things don't go very well for, for good old Kai, our hatchet-wielding hitchhiker. And my review on Letterboxd pretty much says it all. Like, I don't know, like, why they were surprised, these people that were trying to exploit him. And even the documentary is, like, exploitative. And it's just the people that were exploiting him talking. So it's very weird. Yeah. I do want to watch that, though. It's an interesting story. Uh, he was on Jimmy Kimmel and shit. It was mm -hmm. fucking weird. Power Washing Simulator is a game I played. Halo Infinite is a game I played. Overwatch 2 is a game I played. I don't want to talk about any of that right now because we already did. We talked about The Last of Us already. We talked about Paul T. Goldman. And we talked about Chainsaw Man. So therefore, Josh, I think it's time that you roll the intro and start the show. Ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know, Haptic Intel and Hapticast brought to you by W Energy. W was formulated to give you focus and energy with no jitters or crashes. Their formula contains vitamins, amino acids, and nootropics, including the patented Neurofactor. There's no calories, no sugar, no artificial colors, no fillers, none of the bad stuff, but all the good stuff. So your current energy drink may cost anywhere between 2 to $3 per can. 
Nubby costs $1 per drink. So listen, if you find a hard to work or study, use code SLICK to save on Dubby. That's right. Use code SLICK. Save 10% at Dubby.gg. And that's all I got for you. So thank you, Dubby. And uh, let's start the show. Nice. Good job, dude. Thanks, dude. All right. All right. Upcoming video game releases, ladies and gents, we have a lot. We're finally hitting the uh, the apex of the year. This is once we hit this, not the apex hit, legends, but dude, once we hit this peak this week, I'm telling you right now, we're going downhill, and in a good way. We're sledding down, and we're just grabbing games off the hill as we go down. Mm -hmm. So we have <laughs> Recall, a video game that I've never heard of, coming out for PC, Xbox Series S and X, and Switch. It has some hype around it. 17th. I've never heard of this in my life. Yeah. I know Look nothing it about right it, now. and I don't care. Look it up. Recall on Steam. It's a Game Boy Advance game style. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there, you are. there you have it. Uh, Persona 3 Portable is coming out for PC, Xbox Series, SNX, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch on January 19th. This will be on Xbox Game Pass. And so will this next one. So will the next one. Persona 4 Golden one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, it's going to be coming out for Xbox Series S and X, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, same day, January 19th. That is Haptic Intel's greatest game of all time. Is it really? Yeah, I think that was number one, wasn't it? It was either that or God of War. I don't... I think God of War was number two. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. So if you haven't played uh, Persona 4 Golden, well, strap in. The first 20 hours are just the beginning, and then you're in for the long haul. That's a game that you will play... If you if you're not no lifing it, it could take you half of the year to get through. Yeah, genuinely. And I'm gonna say right now, there is no harm and not there is no problem at all with playing the Persona games on the easiest difficulty, especially Golden. Don't yeah. don't even that fucking try because <laughs> you'll you'll play it on normal. You'll get ninety percent through the game, and then there is yeah. a dungeon that is gonna take your pants down and freaking turn your butthole inside out okay yeah it's it's rough so if you want to experience the story and like all the social elements uh which is really the best part of that game right um uh, definitely play on the easiest difficulty i'm actually doing that with persona 5 royale right now yeah I'm that's who playing it yeah it's easiest difficulty i think yeah. it's called safe or something yeah. like that you yeah know? and even all then right. you might get your shit pushed in a couple of times late game oh yeah for sure for so. sure uh, speaking of getting your shit pushed in, Fire Emblem Engage is coming out for the Switch on January 20th. But, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to tell you that a ROM for this game has been dumped online, making the game downloadable three days early. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, um, if you want to try it out before you buy it, there is ways you can do that right now. If you're interested in engaging, that is right. Go do that. And the Fire Emblem community, apparently, is not very excited for this title for some reason. Uh, there's some changes they've made. So It got some really good reviews, though. Well, that's good. So Monster Hunter Rise is coming out for PS5, Xbox Series S, and X, PS4, and Xbox One on January 20th. Josh, is this the this Switch game, game? Yeah, this game's been out on Switch for two years. Okay. Is it enhanced at all? Forspoken is coming out for PC and PS5 on January 24th. Now, I'm here to tell you something about this game. Uh, uh, yeah, me too. I know what you're going to say, but I read something from someone that is currently playing the review copy of the game. Yeah. And they said the demo was awful, and it does not give you an insight into what the game is really well, like at all. I know that they updated the demo today. Um, oh. Yeah. But um, also, you know, don't make a shite demo if you want me to buy your game. Yeah, and here's the idea. here's the other thing I'm gonna tell you, I got Dead Space remake, so I don't really want to play Forspoken right now. Okay, where's that? Why isn't that on here? That's not until the 29th. Oh, okay. Well, World War Z is coming out for PS5 or and Xbox Series. The 23rd, fourth. It's towards the, the end. Same of the day month. as these. No, it's later than that. World it, War Z is coming out again, January 24th. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Christian. Have a fucking better demo if you want me to buy your game. Your game fucking sucked. I agree. I don't disagree, but I saw someone on Twitter saying that people are going to be very surprised. Well, no, well, not me, because I ain't buying it. So. Well, yeah, but you'll be surprised when you see the reviews. I don't really care about the reviews. 
I don't care about that game. I don't like it. I don't want it. Go away. All right. Let's talk about something. Did I just move that rock with my freaking mind? Shut the fuck up, bro. Let's talk about something that is very abysmal in the abysmal chronicles, Josh, the next portion of our show. There is some stuff going on right now with uh, Rocksteady's Suicide Squad game. Yeah. Do you, want I, to, you want me to read this? Yeah. And I want to talk about it. I, All I, right. I really so do. the leaked image is what we're going to be referring to. It's up behind us right now. At least all the parts that we are really going to focus on. Um, so the Louis Suicide Squad image appears to confirm that there's a battle pass more insinuating that it's going to be a games as a service. Um, again, the leaked images are behind us right now for the video viewers. The image, which originated on a 4chan forum and has been verified by a VGC source, is understood to originate from a recent test build and shows various menus planned for the Rocksteady co-op game. Brett. I want, I want to interject here. Actually, a lot of plot details about the game also leaked along with this, uh, this image, these images. And a developer actually commented on this on Twitter and said, that's not true. All the stuff that you're posting about the game is not true. But then we got the image. People already do it. That's what I'm saying. You give these companies money, mm -hmm. that becomes the standard. But if it's cosmetics, does it matter? I don't, I'm not interested in it. Like, I'm really not. And if it is cosmetics, why don't you fucking put some more work into the game and make it part of the game? Make it unlockable through your progression or the story or collectibles in the game. Why does it have to be a battle pass? It feels lazy. Right. Why does it have to be games as a service? It feels it's lazy. Really, is really the crux of it. And I'll tell you right now why. Because they don't want the game to be $70, you buy it, you play it with your friends, you never touch it again. Why and not? Like, why not? Because of Warner Brothers, because of there's a lot of factors as to why. I'm not saying it's a good reason. I'm just trying to explain I don't uh, to people. like it. I, I don't either. Let me give you an example, even though it's not co-op. I picked up the Callisto Protocol for the price it was released at. I mm -hmm. played it and was done in six hours. I hated that game. I don't feel like I wasted my money. I know. But they want to make more money out of you with... Yeah, with well, they can game. eat my ass. So with Suicide Squad, they're I'm like, sick of we, want, we want you to see a cool skin and buy it. Because someone like our friend Christian will be like, that's a cool skin. It's from the comic that I really like, and I want to buy it for my character. I have a suggestion of what they could name the game instead. What's that? It's going to be called Josh Kills the Head of Warner Brothers. So is this bad? Yes. Yes. Um, do we know all the details? No. Yes. And I don't like it. Moving we don't on. Know all the details. It's Motorsport. No, fuck them. Motorsports games employees threaten to leak source code of four games. Brett, this is coming via Insider Gaming. This um, is crazy. Yeah. So. What the fuck? Let me read this. So it's seemingly gone from bad to worse for Microsoft games these past several months with employees not being paid and oh motorsport games, sorry, not Microsoft. These past several months with employees not being paid and threatening lawsuits to its entire board of directors, leaving the company over funding disputes. So now, just so you know, I don't think I don't know if we put it in the notes here or not, but they haven't been paid since October. This is a Russian-based studio, so that definitely plays part of it. They haven't been paid since October. Okay? October. That's fucking bad. In a new update from Anonymous Employees, Insider Gaming has learned that the company is now essentially being blackmailed to pay unpaid wages or source code for its four upcoming games will be released online. Employees who spoke to Insider Gaming under the request of anonymity because they were not authorized to speak about company information has said that one employee has directly threatened Motorsports Games CEO Dimitri Kosko and the company's new directors. It's not upcoming games. They're games that have already released. Oh. Um, but it's the source code still for these games, which... Uh, four of its games, you, you're right. You don't, want, you don't want the source code for your games to leak because that's happening right now with um, projects like uh, right. A lot of Valve projects like Left 4 Dead and Team Fortress 2 and, and Half-Life, uh, all of those have had source code leaks and people are finding some crazy, crazy shit in there. Yeah, I agree with you, Christian, by the way, what he said in the chat. Um, so in the threat, it was said that the employee has source code for four motorsport games, NASCAR, Ignition 21, NASCAR Heat 5, IndyCar, and Kart 
Kraft. The employee has demanded that unpaid wages are paid to employees by January 25th, or the source code for all four games will be released publicly online. That is crazy. Literally Robin Hood. Speaking with other employees not familiar with the situation, it was said that, there were, that they were, quote, not surprised that such a drastic action was being taken from somebody who probably has nothing to lose. Hey, your fucking employees, dude. What is going on? How do you withhold wages for three months? That's wild. And why are you even still there if you're working there? Sue them. Get out. I would do it right now. I don't know if blackmailing is the best course of action, but especially with like these four titles that I don't really think anyone cares about. Uh, but that would mean that if this is like their bread and butter game series, which I don't know much about this. Um, yeah, this developer here it means but, they're not making money after that. Yeah, because their whole source code leaked for all their games. So. Right. Um, this is really bad. Um, like the quote said, you know, they have nothing to lose. It's fucking abysmal. I, I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah, it sucks. It sucks all around. I mean, I, it, it's unfortunate that they're not getting paid. Does it hurt anyone besides the company themselves by leaking the source code? I don't think so. No. So, yeah, man, do what you got to do. Get your money, man. Get your money up, you know? Yeah, get paid. Get paid, brother. All right, let's move into some happier stories here, Brett, shall we? Let's do it. Um, You had something special planned for this, this, this one, you said? Huh? No. Oh, I thought you said you had something special planned for the uh, the first the first story here. No, just that I like the the title of the article, which is Stadia Dies Tonight. So take it away, bro. So Josh, Google Stadia is shutting down tonight, January 18th at midnight Pacific time. Uh, Stadia fans are mourning the end of the streaming platform in the best way they know how by competing to be the very best at Stadia's final game. Worm Game launched for Google Stadia on January 13th as the final entry in the platform's library. It's basically a multiplayer variant of Snake. Now, if you'll notice, Brad, that was four days ago. Right. From four the time days before the end. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Stadia devs used Worm Game to test the platform prior to launch, which makes this the first and only first-party <laughs> Stadia game to actually see the light of day. Four days before uh, it shuts down. Some players are competing on Worm Games leaderboard for the ultimate bragging rights, owning the top score on Stadia's final game and only game uh, as the platform shuts down. Yeah, I have a eulogy for Stadia, and it's what's already on the headstone of one of our thumbnails. We told you so, or we were right. That's right. Um, I just think this is what better way to send out one of the most ill thought out, mismanaged events in video game history than to capstone it with a ill thought out abysmal event in video game history being a game a multiplayer version of a game from 50 years ago right that is the only exclusive to the console that launches less than a week before the service shuts down of which you won't be able to access it anymore i mean that is just fucking chef's kiss and it's called worm game I mean, what an abysmal Worm game. <laughs> Slither.io, Christian calls it. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically Tron, these, he, Christian says these, in the chat, he says these look like zoo animal plates from the early 2000, from early 2009. 2000. Yeah. Put your ketchup in the cow's ears, yo. Wolf, wolf. Yeah. Ears. Um, I don't know, Brian, anything else to add to this? I just thought it was very serendipitous for the end of Stadia. We were right. We told you from the beginning when it was announced it was going to fail and well, it did, so. I'm sorry for all the developers of Stadia that were forced to work on this. Uh, they couldn't see the writing on the wall, and neither could Google. Oh. No. Neither could Google, and neither could Brett, apparently. Because Brett disappeared. I don't know what's going on. I just got kicked. Um, what was I saying? Oh, they couldn't... I feel bad for the developers. They couldn't see the writing on the wall. They got shafted. Um, but we saw the writing on the wall, Josh, because we are always right. That's right. All that matters because we knew that Stadia was going to fucking fail because these people were coming into the game space. They didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They didn't know what was going on. They didn't know that PlayStation now already existed and failed and sucked with cloud gaming. And they didn't know they weren't going to make it. But we knew. And next, 
Amazon Luna, Amazon, we're coming for your ass. You're done. Uh, so that's all I got for you. All right. Moving Next on. Time. Ladies and gentlemen, Attack on Titan's final season is roaring to life this March. We're finally here. Polygon uh, chronicled. <laughs> all right. Polygon chronicled uh, this whole story here. So the official Japanese Twitter account for Attack on Titan, the post-apocalyptic fantasy action series by manga, manga author Hajime Ikiyama, announced on Tuesday that the final season of the anime, Attack on Titan, final season, part three, uh, no, seriously, they swear this time, this is actually the final season. Uh, it will premiere on March 4th. MAPPA, the Japanese animation studio, who fucking slap, by the way, uh, who took over production on the series from Wit Studio following the conclusion of Attack on Titan Season 3, made a follow-up announcement on Twitter that Attack on Titan Final Season Part 3 will be split into two halves, with the first airing in March. The second half of Attack on Titan Final Season Part 3 does not currently have a confirmed date, but it is scheduled to premiere later this year. Uh, they have some information here about when it will um, air in Japanese television. I won't mention that. Um, but as of this writing, it's not officially announced whether Attack on Titan Final Season Part 3 will be simulcasted or on which streaming service. However, given the series has streamed in the past, it's likely that Crunchyroll will stream the new yeah. season when it premieres. I was going to say, we could probably expect that. Um, Christian says he hasn't watched this since Season 2. I just got caught up with last season. It's good. It's actually more than good. It's actually it's excellent. It really is. It, it goes places that you literally cannot expect. I can't even explain to you. Uh, how it felt watching it, because what happened was I watched season one many moons ago. Then I watched season one and two many moons ago, even still a long time ago. Then finally, I was like, I'm just going to I need there's so much of it out. I just need to watch it all. So I rewatched seasons one and two again. And then when I got to season three, when I tell you, holy fucking shit, dude, it's insane. And it's like a completely different show. Uh I can't wait for this because I just need to know what happens at this point. Yeah, it's um, and the way the way that the last season or part of the season ended made me want to snap my own neck in half. Uh, so I'm I'm acting tame right now, but I am genuinely excited for this. But I can't I can't I can't get too excited because this show has a historical problem with fucking being delayed to oblivion. And I'm not until yeah. it is being beamed into my eye sockets. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna let myself get excited. The good thing is that Mappa did take over from Wit Studio, and I, I believe Wit Studio was the studio responsible for all of the issues in the past because they took over after Part Three mm -hmm. or Season Three, yeah, or with Season Three. So, um, and Mappa, oh, they rule. Yeah, yeah, they they rule. So no ifs, um, really no excited. ifs, ands, or buts about that one. Yeah. So if you're an Attack on Titan fan, be ready. March fourth, it begins. If you're watching the dub, you probably have to wait a little bit longer, but um, it'll be on Adult Swim. So, all right, we're going a little bit long today. It's already seven thirty. We're fine. You're on the East Coast. I don't care. I don't want to be I around anymore. Either. Yeah, it's our main topic. And yeah. it's about Metal Gear and Konami. Yeah. You want to lead this or you want me to? I will. So okay. Take me away the to that special actor, place. The voice actor for Metal Gear's Raiden suggests a Metal Gear Solid showcase is coming. Twitter user at ZX Solid X Snake ZX tweeted. I cannot believe you read that whole thing out. <laughs> tweeted, quote. Perhaps a Metal Gear Rising 2, along with the rest of the upcoming Metal Gear Showcase, might just make it? I don't know what this is in um, context to. I don't really care, because the part that's important is Raiden's VO, voiceover artist, Quentin Flynn, actually replied to this tweet and said, Stay tuned for things to be announced in the coming weeks. Winky face. Yeah, it's we're, we're blocking it. It's right there. I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to see it that well. People watching on the video, but oh well. So it's worth noting, Josh, and this is my own observation. Note here. it. February, which is in just like 15 days, will be Metal Gear Rising Revengeance's 10-year anniversary. Mm. That game came out in 2013. 
And that is a game that stars Raiden. It doesn't have Snake in it at all, to my understanding. Um, but for those that don't know, Raiden is a character in Metal Gear Solid 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, apparently, and also uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. And he is actually the protagonist of the second game. Mm. Um, they do a little switcheroo. They make you think you're playing as Snake again, and then you actually play as Raiden. Yeah. So that's cool. And this is the, vo the voice actor saying, things are coming. Stay tuned. So my question, Josh, I have two questions for you. Number one, could this be a full-on Metal Gear revival showcase by Konami, similar to the Silent Hill showcase? Yes. And with that comes the movie with Oscar yes. Isaac playing Snake, and the remake by Bluepoint. Yes. And possible spinoffs and sequels and HD remasters. Yes. First of all, this is real. It's happening. Second of all, yes to all those things. Third of all, here's what I want. Okay? I don't care about uh, whatever this person's talking about, I don't give a fuck about. I'll tell you what I want. I want a Metal Gear remake. I want a Metal Gear 2 remake. I want a Metal Gear 3 remake. I want a Metal Gear 4 remake. And I want it all on modern consoles at 60 FPS and 4K. That's what I want. And I want them all at the same time. And that's it. Metal Gear Solid 4 is stranded right now on the PS3. There is I no know. way to play it anywhere else. Yeah. That, is that so. Guns of the Patriot or is that 3? Uh... Sons of the Patriot? Sons, guns, sons, whatever. I don't fucking know. Something, something about is, a Patriot. Yeah, I think that is the fourth one. I, I have only played one and two. I've only played one, and it was awesome. Yeah, and and I, I want... I started three, but I had issues with my controller, so I started. I want a remake of it, because if I can play them through modern means, I'd rather do that. Because while I loved that Metal Gear experience, I don't know if I could play another game dealing with all that shit, dude. I really don't know if I could if I can handle well, it. Well, I'll tell you that Metal Gear Solid is the only game like that. Oh. Um, the other games are on PS2, and they play like PS3 games. So okay. They're very, they're very good. More modern and in control. Yeah, 100%. They were for PlayStation 2. The, the first game was on PS1. The others were on PS2. And actually, there was a, a remake of one already that came out. It's called the Twin Snakes, oh. and that actually was on GameCube, I believe, and maybe even PlayStation 2. Right. So there was like a newer version of that first game, but I think there's some charm to it in the graphic style and whatnot of the first one. Um, it's still better than 95% of games that are released today. Yeah, exactly. So it almost plays like a like a modern day indie game. Yeah, it's in terms of the graphics and whatnot. It's the first and I know this isn't a conversation about Metal Gear Solid one, but that is that's the first, I mean, I love Kojima, don't get me wrong. I love Kojima, I love him as a human being, as a personality, I love Death Stranding. Um, when I played the first Metal Gear Solid, it was the first time I was like, oh yeah, this man is a fucking genius. Yeah. I'm with you there. Truly. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I think we are going to get a something um, akin to a show, like a Resident Evil showcase or something like that. Um, I think it'll be big, and I think, like you said, there's going to be multiple announcements in it, just like the Silent Hill one specifically, where there's movies, games, cross-media, and I think it'll be massive. Um, because clearly, I mean, Silent Hill is Konami, right? And I think if you watch that Silent Hill showcase and what we're, they're doing with Silent Hill, I think that is the template that you can expect for Metal Gear. Yeah. And they're even still saying they're accepting proposals for Silent Hill games moving forward. Yeah. So it seems like they're back in the game space, finally. Uh, they are. They're here, and they're ready to fucking... I mean, they killed it with their collections and stuff like that. I I expect big things. I do. And I know this is Konami we're talking about, the Pachinko company right now, but I expect big, very big things. Very good things. What I want is... I want a remastered collection of one two three four um and that that could be its own one two three and four as its own thing we already have uh five and we have ground zeros are already on modern consoles mm -hmm. or at least on playstation 4 um and then maybe an hd version of rising revengeance because uh, that game's even on pc now and you can run that at like really mm -hmm. good specs and shit so that one's probably definitely going to get ported over and then i think what we can expect besides a collection of remastered versions of the original games and I know you said a remake of one, two, three, and so on, but I think we're going to get a remake of one, just a remake of one to start. And then we're going to go on after that. Mm -hmm. uh, 
much like we're kind of speculating persona three is doing where we're getting the port of the original version and then apparently there's a remake coming i think it's going to be like that uh and that'll be perfect because that'll tie in with the film that is apparently being worked on for years at this point so they can have this nice remake of the game right alongside the movie of the game and uh, oscar isaac will be in it and it'll be fantastic and it'll be great now one last thing i want to mention is some more corroborating news that could prove all of this is true and that is our good friend the snitch who Mm -hmm. retired from leaking games however he still has a discord server where he still leaks some stuff every once in a while and he recently leaked that there is probably going to be an impending third party playstation showcase Mm. because they have a lot of third party stuff that they are ready to show Mm. so is this konami is this they could be involved could be is this finally going to be maybe there's silent hill stuff that we have still been waiting for like the short message demo experience Mm. right that never came out Mm. so there's a lot of what ifs but i think that they could be related here yeah it's possible i mean these people need to start talking so yeah and how does kojima handle this by fucking making death stranding 2 the best game anybody's ever played i just feel like it kind of sucks that he won't be involved uh at all especially in like the film he's working on death stranding movie yeah i forgot about that so damn watch that be better than a metal gear movie it will be It'll be like an A24 versus like a Hollywood blockbuster Marvel movie. That'll be like... The... Yeah. It'll be fucking like Hereditary versus the fucking Uncharted movie. Right. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Uh, that's it, man. That's it for our show. Yep. Everybody get out. Get the fuck out. That's all I got for you, man. And it was a good show. We had a lot to talk about. We did. Uh, Christian's asking us if we watched The Whale yet. No, Mm -mm. not yet. I want to, but no. We don't go to the movies anymore. Yeah, Megan was the last time I'm ever going to the movies. So, Except, I'll make one exception for you. If RRR gets another release for Oscar time... There uh you go. Wait, we just froze for some reason. Wait, we're there, though. I'm here. I'm I'm here. No, we're here, but we froze on on the thing. What's going on? Dude, what's... What? What is happening? Well, they can hear us, so keep talking. I don't want to talk. I just want to dance. Um, all right, well, if we're frozen, GG. Here's what I'm going to say. Um, Christian made fun of me when I... Hang on Twitter. He... Okay, there you go. Go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Christian made fun of me on... Um... In the chat here, he said, XX Brett Rob, XX plug my butt. Uh, that was not my name. That was not my email. That is slanderous, and I will be taking you to court over that. Um, and here's what I want to really say 100 episodes coming soon, episode 100 of Half the Cast. We've been doing this for a long time. We've started over and had to kick people out and start over. And, and you know, we've done this podcast for a long time. We finally hit an episode 100. We appreciate all the support. Please. Hacktagintel.com. Go there. Check out our merch. We have a lot of cool stuff on there. We want you to participate in episode 100. So right now, you can call 904-TRUE-CULT. That is 904-T-R-U-C-U-L-T or 904-878-2858. Call that number. Leave a voicemail. We'll play your voicemail on the show. We'll make that a talking point. But also, in the 100th episode... If you're there live, you can call that number and we'll talk to you live on the show. So, yeah, Uh, it's not next week, Christian. It's two weeks, I believe. Yes, this is episode 98. Um, Also, so just to give everybody a little update while we're frozen, apparently GridFam is not sending a signal to uh, Streamlabs. So. So what does that mean? It's a GridFam side issue. What does that mean, though? It means that GridFam sucks. But are we live? No, we're live. It's grid fam. How if people see us. Oh, can they still see us? Yeah, they can see us and they can hear us, but we're not moving. We're frozen. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really cr- cool. Yeah, we should use that instead, Christian, but I didn't feel like setting it up when it launched. So maybe uh, if, if it's going to keep doing this, 
then, uh, well, well, I'll have to switch it. Well, I like the image that's frozen, though. Me too. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Make sure you give us a call, be a voicemail. We love you. We're frozen. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. I think for some time and I can spend some time with you. Just the two of us. The two of us. Castles in the sky. Just the two of us. Hello, Mario.